Welcome back to Basic Introduction to Deep Learning. In this third and final part of the course, we're going to be looking at convolutional neural networks. And we're going to try and build upon the concepts that we saw in part one and part two. First off, we might ask, well, what sort of data might we want to use convolutional neural networks for? Convolutional neural networks are particularly good for regularly structured data. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean data that has the same structure at every point. To give sort of an example of that, let's look at time series data. So time series data, you have a bunch of different acquisition points. And at each acquisition point, you have a previous and next value. You, even, you can even have two previous and two next, but that temporal structure is regular because it's the same for every point in your data. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, we have our data and we can represent it as a vector that has a dimension for each time point where data was acquired. And then the value of that dimension equals to whatever data was acquired. In this example, we're, say the EEG amplitude. Now, what we can do with convolutional neural networks is we can try and take advantage of this structure in the data. What we're going to do in this example is we're going to look at using a convolutional neural network that just takes into consideration the previous time point, the time point we're looking at, and then the next time point. You can use filters of greater sizes, and, it, and that's what's often done in convolutional networks. And in this case, we're going to look at a 1D convolutional network, and that's because we're just going to be moving our filter, in this case, the size 3 filter, throughout the data in one dimension. That is through the time dimension. And we're going to be applying it at every point as we move it through time. So let's look at that more in detail. So here what we have is we have our filter, our weights for the filter, in this case, the three different weights, and we're going to apply it to the first time point. Now, what you'll notice is that some of the filter is cut off if we apply the weight to the first time point. And what this is something that you'll run across when uh, using neural networks, particularly convolutional neural networks, is something called zero padding, which means that if we are centering a filter on a value and part of that filter is outside of the inputs, dimension, uh, inputs dimensions, then that is zeroed out. So what we can do is we can apply this filter. And then by applying the filter, what we mean is we just mean that taking the inputs, multiplying by their corresponding weights, and then summing them together. And this is very similar to what we've seen before. But in convolutional neural networks, what we're going to do is we're going to move this filter in, in this case, one dimension, because it is a 1D convolutional network. So we're going to move it in time, and we're going to center the filter on another input dimension, that is another acquisition time point, and apply the filter there. And you can continue moving these sorts of filters. Now, the question is, well, what exactly would this filter be? Well, some examples of a filter that might be useful is a peak detector. That is where the first value of the filter is low, the middle value is high, and the third value is low. And that would be a peak detector. You could also have a trough detector where the first value is high, the middle value is low, and the third value is high. And so what this is doing is this is just taking these features, this feature detect, this filter, and applying it to every time point to see if that particular pattern is present at that particular acquisition time point. And you can move it and apply it to every time point in your input. However, this is going to give us a time series for each of the different filters that we have. And often in these convolutional networks, you have multiple types of filters. And so here's sort of a representation of that, where 
as you go along a row, you're going along time po points that you where you require data. And as you're going along a column, you're going along for a particular time point, what was the value when you applied a different filter. Now, if we just have a shallow 1D convolutional neural network, this would be the linear inputs to the hidden layer. And then we would apply a nonlinearity. Then after we've applied that nonlinearity, what we can do is we can apply a linear model to get a prediction. So for regression, we would just have a weight for every filter and for every time point. And we would just multiply that filter times the corresponding time point and filter value after you've applied nonlinearity and then sum all those together. And you would get your regression prediction. Similarly, you can get the logit for a binary classification prediction. Now, how would we scale this sort of 1D convolutional model up to being a deep neural network? Well, instead of applying one of these linear predictors to the output of the hidden layer, we can apply another 1D convolutional layer. Now, in the first example, we just looked at applying a filter to a time series to one single time series. However, now the input to the convolutional layer is going to have a time series for each of the filters for the first convolutional layer. So how do we deal with that? Well, what we can do is that means that we have a filter that has a value for each of the basically sizes that we're going to use. In this case, we have three. So the, we're going to have a value for each of the time points that we're looking at for the filter. And then we're going to have a value for each one of the filters in the first convolutional layer. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a weighted sum to get the value for a particular second convolutional layer filter. And we can just move this filter across the data, just like we saw in the input. And ultimately, that is going to give us a time series for one filter for the second convolutional layer. And you can apply a bunch of different filters. And again, you will have then a representation for the second convolutional layer, that is number of filters by number of time points. And you can then either apply another convolutional layer to that, or you can apply the linear predictor that we looked at in the previous slide. So those sorts of the basics of convolutional networks when we're looking at one dimensional convolutional networks. What important concept to look at when we're talking about convolutional networks is something called a receptive field. A receptive field tries to get at how much input information does a unit in a hidden layer have access to. So if we are going to look at an example where we have a filter size of three, which is what we've been looking at throughout these slides, then e each unit in the first convolutional layer has a receptive field size of three. That is, it can see three input dimension values. However, what's going to happen if we have a convolutional layer on top of the first convolutional layer? Well, each unit there sees three of the units in the first convolutional layer. And each one of those units sees three uh, three dimensions of the input. And so this means that a unit in the second layer actually has access to more 
input dimensions than a unit in layer one. And this sort of increasing receptive field size continues on as you have deeper and deeper convolutional neural networks. So far, we've just looked at 1D convolutional networks, but you can have convolutional neural networks that are 2D or 3D. And the question is like, well, when would you want to use those? So two of the most common reasons you'd want to use those are images, which is two-dimensional input data, and volumes, which would be three-dimensional input data. And so then when we're doing a convolution, we have a we have a kernel that is not 1D like we saw in when we were doing uh, convolution 1D convolutional networks. You instead have a 2D kernel, and instead of just moving the kernel in one dimension along the time dimension like we saw in 1D, you're going to move it along both spatial dimensions, and so you're going to apply it to every input dimension. and you're just gonna move it in both directions. Similarly, what you can have is for 3D convolutions, you're gonna have a kernel that is 3D, has three dimensions. And you're gonna move it to every location in the input by moving along the three dimensions. Then after you've done this, you would have the linear combinations for the, every location. You can apply nonlinearity, and then you can either apply another convolutional layer, or you can apply a linear pre layer. So to sort of summarize what we looked at, we said, OK, well, some data have regular structure, and we might want to take advantage of this. We saw how for some types of regular structured data, we can use convolutional neural networks to apply filters to every input location as a way to detect whether a certain feature is present at the various input locations. Now, the predictions of these models are the same predictions that we saw for linear models and for general neural networks. And so the objective functions are the same. And the learning algorithms are also the same. You would just use backpropagation to compute all the gradients. So hopefully in this course, you have a sense of what is going on in neural networks. And in the sort of corresponding lab, you'll get a chance to deal with these sorts of models uh, in Python.